hi everyone. I am Tan Hai Bron from TU Vienna. Now I'm talking about my paper, Cutoffs for Symmetric Point to Point Distributed Algorithms. It's joint work with Igor Konov and Josep Vidal, who are my supervisors. They are currently working at Informal Systems. Here is the summary. In this talk, I will present how to verify a well-known algorithm, the failure detector of Chandra and 2A. A main idea is to show that this algorithm enjoys the cutoff property. First, let me show you how the failure detector looks like. Here we have a timing diagram. This diagram presents an execution path with two processes, P1 and P2. In this execution path, P1 is always correct, but P2 will crash at this time point. And the failure detector needs to detect all crashes in the system. So how can they do that? In the beginning, every correct process brush each other. For example, you can see here P1 brush P2. Moreover, there are timeouts to show how long a process should wait for another. For instance, this is the timeout of P1 for P2. And every correct process repeatedly sends a live matrix to on to inform that it's working normally. For example, this is an alive message from P1 to P2. And because P2 receives a message from P1, so P2 still trust P1. However, uh, in this period, P1 doesn't receive any message from P2. And after this time point, the corresponding timeout is passed. So that's why P1 suspect P2. Later, P1 receives a message from uh, P2 at this time point. So P1 immediately draws P2 again and increase the timeout for P2. You can see that this period is really longer than the previous one. And now let's look at what happens to P2. You can see that P2 crosses at this time point. So after this time point, P1 will never receive any message from P2. And that's why P1 will eventually and permanently suspect P2 in this period. And this is the pseudocode. The pseudocode describes exactly what I said before. And one thing I need to say is that in the system, there are unsquare point-to-point communication channels. Remember that our goal is to detect all crosses in the system. So the algorithm should satisfy the two following properties, strong completeness and eventual strong accuracy. These properties are formalized in linear temporal logic and F and G here, they are temporal operators. The first formula, strong completeness, means that every crash process, every crash process is eventually and permanently suspected by every correct process. The second formula, eventual strong accuracy, means that there is a time after which all correct processes are not suspected by any correct process. Now I explain to you why the failure detector is challenging to verify. The first reason is that this algorithm is parameterized by the number of processes. Here we have M processes and N squared channels. So we need to verify infinitely many instances. Second, multiple processes can take a step at the same time. Third, 
daisy, the global clock, and every process has its own local clock. So, if we naively encode the global clock as an integer number counter, its value keeps increasing. Finally, there are implicit time constraints on message delay and process speed. For example, uh, if you consider the asynchronous model. In this model, there is no bound on message delay. So, it may be that a correct process never receives a message from an order until the timeout is passed. So, in the asynchronous model, this algorithm doesn't work well. So, in our paper, we avoid the last challenge by considering only the synchronous model. So, now we know that verification of the failure detector is a parameterized model checking problem. Unfortunately, parameterized model checking is undecidable in general. So can we overcome this negative result? The answer is yes, and there are two approaches. The first one is based on user-guided invariance and proof assistance. It is a general approach, but it requires a lot of human efforts. The second approach is based on automatic reasoning techniques. These techniques have been applied to verify restricted classes of algorithms and properties. For instance, token ring, mutual exclusion, or distributed consensus. So, can we find an automatic verification technique for the failure detector? Before I show you how we can verify the failure detector, I would like to emphasize one important characteristic of the failure detector, the symmetry. First, let's talk about the symmetry in the algorithm. In the failure detector, every process follows the same algorithm. Therefore, they are isomorphic in the renaming. Second, when a process needs to send a message, at, for example, at line number six, you can see that it can execute only send to own instructions. Moreover, the content of a live message does not depend on delivered messages from other processes. So now, let's look at line number type 9. You can see that the update of the local variable suspected PQ depends only on message tree from process Q and all information about process Q. And we have a similar thing when a process needs to update the value of suspected PQ at line number 12 here. So that's why we can consider there are n separated failure detector modules in every process. And now you can see that the network is also symmetric. For example, here you can see that this is the network with four processes. This is a complete graph. And uh, in general, there are n square point to point communication channels in the system. In the checking property, they are also symmetric. So you can see that of properties, strong completeness, and eventual strong accuracy. They are symmetric. And what else? You can see here that we can replace a universal quantifier with a big conjunction. And we can move the temporal operators inside the big conjunction. Instead of checking a specific property, so we generalize our result. So our cutoff result can be applied to every property in the following form. This form. 
and psi pq is an LTL minus S formula and every predicate in psi pq that's one of the syntactic forms q1 p q2 q q3 pq and q4 qp so now i would like to discuss the cut off property why is this property interesting the reason is that if an algorithm enjoys the cut off property then instead of checking on instances now we need to focus only on the few small instances this tactic has been used to verify many algorithms for example token based algorithms or quorum based algorithms this is the overview of our social solution you can see that there are four steps in the step one we will prove that the global system is fully symmetric here you can see that this is an instance with four processes and if we change process indices then we obtain the same system second we we'll prove that an instance with m processes gn and an instance with two processes g2 they are trace equivalent under a set of automatic predicates in this set ap12 the set of automatic predicates every predicate has one of the forms q11 q22 q312 and q421 and here is the proof sketch the first direction assume that we uh, have an execution path in an instance with three processes th three like here and we need to construct a new path in g2 such that this path and this path they are trace equivalent how can we do that the idea is very simple we need to remove process p3 and we need to remove all information related to p3 so then we obtain a new path in uh, g2 and because our system is fully symmetric and the validity detector modules in every process are separated so that's why this path is legal in g2 and another direction so now assume that we have an execution path in g2 and we need to construct a new path in g3 such that this path and this path they are right equivalent the idea is that we add a process p3 and we assume that p3 process in the beginning and again because our system is fully symmetric and the failure detector modules in every process are separated so the new path here is illegal in g3 so by brief response so we have our cut off result this formula is complicated but it has a beautiful meaning this formula means that instead of checking on instances with m processes now we need to focus on only an instance with two processes g2 for example here you can see that we don't need to check an instance with four processes we need to focus only on an instance with two processes here g2 and the step four because we are working on the synchronized model so the state space of g2 is finite and then we can uh, run model checkers to verify the checking property on g2 here are the experiments to demonstrate our approach we specify the failure detector in the language tla plus you can find our specification in my github repository the link is provided on the slide here I show 
experiments with two properties, strong completeness and an inductive invariant. You can see that in both, in both cases, our cutoff result really helps us. For example, in the experiment with strong completeness, you can see that TLC can verify an instance with two processes in two seconds. However, if there are six processes, TLC reaches the timeout. Here we set the timeout to 10 hours. And for the inductive invariant, both motor checkers, TLC, and Appalachia can verify an instance with two processes in one minute. However, TLC reaches the timeout when there are three processes. And uh, Appalachia is really better because it can verify an instance with four processes in 30 minutes. And the most important thing in our paper is that we can generalize our cutoff result. So in our paper, we define a new class of distributed algorithms called symmetric point-to-point -point class. And our cutoff result can be applied to verify every algorithm in this class because the formalization is very technical. I will not present this definition in this talk, so you can find it in our paper. We are going to the end. In the last few minutes, I have presented a cutoff result for symmetric point-to-point -point distributed algorithms. Our cutoff result can be applied to verify every formula in the two following forms, with one index or with two indexes. We demonstrate our approach by verifying the failure detector of Chandra and Tua. In our paper, you can find more details about the formalization, the proofs, and more experiments. We have more experiments for different properties because our work is for the synchronous model. So we don't need to consider other parameters for message delay or relative process speed. So for the future work, uh, we would like to find automatic verification techniques to scope with these parameters. And if you have any questions, please send me an email. My email address is provided on the slide. And that's all. Thank you very much for listening.